Pinang River has been polluted ever since I've known and it's filled with trash, it's filled with black water and it also emits an odor even though you're on a vehicle. So this triggered me on how is it possible to clean the water, to clean the river as we have seen probably in other countries. Today, I'm with Dr. Fateha, a water doctor from University Science Malaysia. I do my research in water and wastewater treatment, specifically in understanding the levels of pollution and ways how to treat it, making it acceptable to be released into the environment. There are different types of environmental pollution. The main causes of polluted water are human activities, such as agriculture, construction and industries, Although the water appears clear, it does not necessarily mean that it does not contain any pollutants. We are at a mangrove forest at Sungai Chenam in Nibong Tabal, Penang. Here, Dr. Fatia works with the community to combat pollution and sustain the cleanliness of the river. Yaitu berkongsi persatuan kebajikan nelayan-nelayan pantai Pulau Pinang. Peranan utama kita adalah untuk membantu menyelesaikan masalah nelayan dari segi pencerobohan pukat tunda, kecemaran laut dan juga sungai. Selain itu, kita sangat komentik dalam memerah hutan bakau sebab keseluruhan hutan perah bakau ini, dia menjadi zon penampan kepada omba, angin, ribut dan sebagainya. Jadi, kita sebagai masyarakat nelayan, kita perlu memelihara baliklah apa yang ada. Jadi, pada tahun 1997, Nombor tujuh, kita sudah mulalah menanam pokok-pokok bakau untuk kita pelihara balik ekosistem. Jadi pada tahun nombor tujuh sampai hari ini, kita telah berjaya menanam menghampiri 400 ribu pokok di seluruh Pulau Pinang. Normally, the colour would be due to the total suspended solids. The high concentration of impurities it could be chemical particles, it could be from soil. If, let's say, the water is totally very, very dark brown, we could estimate that there is some kind of agriculture present nearby. There is an identifiable odour. Not to say sweet smelling like a, a perfume, but you know it comes from a, from a fruit. <laughs> oh, you're meeting our life. Let me. <laughs> From the site, we will collect extra samples and bring it to the lab where we do further analysis, such as biochemical oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand, total suspended solids, which will give further information on the level of pollution that is contained within the water samples. From there, we can differentiate whether the water should be treated biologically, chemically, or just merely uh, physical treatment. Usually, wastewater treatments use the chemical coagulant known as PACL or polyaluminium chloride. The main chemical compound in PACL is aluminium, but if too much is added and there are any residues of aluminium in the water, it can lead to health problems like Alzheimer's and dementia. At a treatment plant, excess coagulants that cannot be filtered out ends in the sludge, and this will lead to the problem of soil pollution. One of the treatment approaches that we do is the jar test. The jar test is meant to find the appropriate dosage of coagulant that is meant to coagulate the particles or the pollutants in the water and settle it as fast as possible. So from there, we can identify which would be the optimum coagulant dosage, the settling rate, uh, probably also the mixing time as well. But further specific information can be extracted by using the zetasizer the zeta sizer would give precise information on the surface charge of the solution 
and how it would interact to the coagulant that is being added into the solution, into the wastewater sample. So we can see how efficient the coagulant would be able to aggregate the pollutants in the sample and allow it to settle. And the growth of the particles can be also measured as well. From here, we will also identify that at a certain point, if too much coagulant is being added, it will start to disperse and this will be reflected on the screen through the measurements. With my fundamental knowledge, I hope to train industrial operators who oversee wastewater treatment processes. I would like to give them an insight that they actually can do more in order to avoid wastage. My vision is to one day see that our entire society have direct access to drinking water from their taps. We may be a long way from achieving this aim, but it is possible. <laughs>